Hello everyone, today I am here to share with you every single book I read in 2020. All 140 of them, that's right, I read 140 books this year. That's a lot. I read 140 books this year. That's probably the most I've ever read in a year. I think that's largely due to two reasons. Number one being COVID. It's a horrible thing that happened this year. We were all stuck at home a lot. And so with that, I read a lot. And number two, I got an e-reader this year. So I read a lot of e-books. So this video, I'm going to show you every single book that I read this year to share with you what genre it was and what I rated it. And that's all I'm going to go into it. If you want to hear about any particular books, just type the book title in and then search bookables. And then you can probably find it on my channel somewhere. I'm sure I've talked about all of these books in various videos on my channel. So just so you know, because it's a lot. Um, before we dive into showing you the books, I want to share some statistics. T statistic. I always have a time with that word. So anyway, we established I read 140 books. And please forgive me, I read 49,267 pages read. So that's a lot. My average rating was a three and a half. <laughs> so I mean, I think that's fine. Whatever. But well, breaking it down into different genres. So um, I really started focusing on this, like different statistics and things like that a few years ago when I was starting to read more adult books. And it was like, I read maybe close, maybe like five more adult books than YA books. This year, it's very different. I, I read 102 adult books and only 38 YA books. So a big, big difference this year. Um, with that, breaking it down from the adult genre, I read 60 romance books, which is the most romance I've ever read on my channel. I read 23 thriller books, which is probably the most I've read. Um, four horror books, four adult fantasy, one classic book, five like literary fiction books, three paranormal books, and two historical books. Then when we go into my young adult reads, I, I read 27 young adult contemporary books, six fantasy young adult books, four YA thrillers, and one graphic novel. So add that all up, it equals to 140. I also forgot to add a section for ebooks because you're gonna see a big thing on this video of how many ebooks I really read this year. Again, it's because I got an e-reader and a lot to COVID because when COVID, um, starting to really ramp up publishers stopped sending a lot of physical arcs understandably so and so instead they would send e-arcs and i didn't read a ton of e-arcs before but now i read them all the time i e-read a lot now so that's a big difference as well as i used to didn't read ebooks at all but now i read them i wouldn't say almost exclusively but it's probably like half and half so my number of ebooks i read this year is right here i'm sure it's a pretty big number so like I said, we're gonna break this down month by month, telling you what I read that month, what I rated it, and what genre it is. So sit back, enjoy, it's gonna go fast. Hope you like it. The first book I read in 2020 is Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. This is an adult romance. I gave a three out of five. Then I have Hidden Bodies by Carolyn Kepnes, which is an adult thriller, a two out of five. Likewise, as The Wives by Taryn Fisher, another thriller, I also gave a two out of five. And I have another thriller, this one, The Silent Patient by, I forget the author's name because it was actually a library book, I gave it a three out of five. Then we have Tweet Cube by Emma Lord, a Y contemporary that I gave a five. Last up, Lucky Caller by Emma Mills, another contemporary, which I also gave a three. Moving into February, I read eight books, the first one being Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is an adult historical romance and I gave it a four. American Royals by Catherine McGee, a YA contemporary, I gave a four. Would You Like to Meet by Rachel Winters, an adult romance, I gave a three. You Are Not Alone by Gerard Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, an adult thriller, which I gave a two. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, a YA contemporary, which I gave a four. Other People's Houses by Abby Wexman, an adult literary fiction, I guess you would say, which I gave a four. Wild at Heart by K.A. E. Tucker, an adult romance, and I gave it a five. And lastly, The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, an adult thriller, which I gave a four. And in March, we're gonna start seeing my reading pickup. Also, my hair's gonna get crazier, sorry. <laughs> Um, I have 11 books I read. Um, first up, Moment of Truth by Casey West, a YA contemporary, which I gave a four. 
<sighs> House of Blood and Earth by Sarah J. Mass, an adult fantasy. I gave it a five, favorite book of the year. We all know. Then I have Happiness for Beginners by Catherine Center, an adult romance, which I gave a three. Next up is Things I Want My Son to Know by Frederick Bachman. This is an adult literary kind of nonfiction book. I gave it a three. Next up is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hebert, an adult romance, which I gave a four. You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle, another adult romance. I gave a five. Then I have my only classic for the year, Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. I gave it a five. Loved it. Another adult romance, The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. I gave it a three. Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, an adult paranormal romance. I gave it two, probably. <laughs> I'm rethinking a lot of my ratings right on the spot. I have Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey, another vampire book, another paranormal romance. I gave it a five. And lastly, I have The Neighbors by Nicola Gill, I believe the author is. I gave it a three. It's an adult kind of literary fiction. Living in April, I have 14 books, so you can, yeah, it's gonna get bigger and bigger. Just you wait. I have a whole bunch of thrillers I read this month. He started it by Samantha Downing, an adult thriller. Gave it a four. The Guest List by Lucy Foley, another thriller. Gave it a five. Loved it. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendricks, an adult thriller. Gave it a four. The Trouble with Hating You by Sandra Patel, an adult romance, which I gave a three. The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund, a YA contemporary. I gave it a two. Did not enjoy it at all. What I Like About You by Melissa Cantor, I believe, and a young adult contemporary, I gave it a three. Time of Our Lives by Emily Wibberly and Awesome Sam Roca, another YA contemporary, which again, I gave a three. Next up is The Happy Ever Playlist by Abby Hamezen. This is an adult romance, gave it a four. The Worst Best Man by Mia Soso, another adult romance, another four. Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye, another adult romance. I'm gonna give it a five this time. Five. Head Over Heels by Hannah Ornstein. Another romance. Gave it a three. Then we have The Right Swipe by Steffi Chapman, I believe. I gave it a three. And Ghosting a Love Story by Tasha Skilton, I believe. I gave it a three as well. Moving into May, I read 16 books and these are only physical ones I have. So I read I told you my evil game was strong this year. <laughs> First up, I have Island Affair by Priscilla Olivieri's adult romance, gave it a four. Not Like the Movies by Carrie Winfrey, another romance, gave it a three. The Wife Who Knew Too Much by Michelle Campbell, a thriller, I gave it a two, didn't like it really. Speech Read by Emily Henry, another romance, five out of five. The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda, a thriller, which got a three. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, a young adult thriller, which I really enjoyed, I gave it a four. The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler, an adult romance, which I gave a three. Not That Kind of Guy by Andy William, no, Andy J. Christopher, which I gave a three. You Lucky Dog by Julia London, I believe, which is the romance, which I gave a four. Free Into the Sky by Michelle Hazen, I believe, which is a romance, which I gave a three. Please forgive me if I forget the author's names. Um, I wrote them down, but I couldn't fit the author's name in them, so please forgive me. Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, which is another romance, which I gave three. Four Days of You and Me by Miranda Keelany, which is a young adult contemporary book, which I gave a three as well. 90 Days to Elsewhere by Casey Dyer, which I gave a four. It's a romance as well. Someone's Listening by Serafina Nova Glass, I believe, an adult thriller, which I gave a three. Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, a young adult fantasy, gave it a two. Don't like it. Paris is Always a Good Idea by Jen McKinley, which is a romance, and I gave it a four. And lastly, for May, I have The Spare Bedroom by Elizabeth Neep, I believe, which I gave a three, and it's a romance. Moving into June. Got 18 books for June. A lot of physical ones, too. Oh my gosh, and I just lost them. The Upside of Falling by Alex Light, which is a YA contemporary, I gave it a four. The Night Swim by Megan Golden, an adult thriller, gave it a four. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, an adult thriller, which I give a five. My favorite Riley Sager book thus far. Another classic book, but a classic mystery. And then There Were None by Agatha Christie, gave it a three. Crave by Tracy Wolf, a YA paranormal fantasy, I gave it a three. <laughs> <laughs> How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams, an adult romance, which I gave a five. Phoenix First Must Burn, this is a YA anthology, um, so it has a whole bunch of authors in it. It's a fantasy one, and I gave it a four. Party of Two by Jasmine Gilroy, an adult romance, which I gave a four. Flap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, another YA contemporary, gave it a five out of five. Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow, a young adult fantasy, I gave it a three. Anna Kay by... Oh my goodness, I forget the other's name. Oh, I'm so horrible. It's a YA um, retelling of Anna Karenina. 
I gave it a four. You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Dario, an adult romance, gave it a four. The Escape Room by Megan Golden, another thriller, gave it a four. Player Next Door by K.A. Tucker, an adult romance, which I gave a three. Isn't Hers by Alice Feeney, an adult thriller, another three. Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which I gave a five. We'll just go with five. Loved it. Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rashan, an adult romance, which I gave a three. And lastly, The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai, which is another romance, I gave a three. Moving into July. 14 books. Here we go. First up, Last Hang Standing by, oh, I forget the author's name. It was an adult romance. I gave it a three. Shadows by Alex North, an adult thriller. Gave it a four. A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee, an adult romance, which I gave a four. You Say It First by Katie Catugno, a Y contemporary, which I gave it two. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon, a Y contemporary. Gave it a five. 10 Things I Hate About Pinky by Sinan Menon, a YA contemporary, which I gave a four. The Mall by Megan McCafferty, um, another YA contemporary, gave it a two. The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson, adult fantasy, I gave a three. This Time Tomorrow by Tessa Bailey, uh, an adult paranormal romance, I gave a four. Dear Emmy Blue by Louisa Lewis. Oh, I'm horrible. Um, an adult romance, I gave a three. What You Wish For by Catherine Center, another romance, I also gave a three. Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop by Rosalind Lim, another romance, I gave a three. To Want You by Alicia Rye, another romance, which I gave a three. And lastly, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, a Y contemporary, which I gave a four. Moving into August, I have 12. First up, I have One to Watch by Kate Stamen London, an adult romance, five out of five. <laughs> She's Faking It by Kristen Rockaway, two out of five. Did not enjoy it. The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan, an adult literary fiction, I guess you could say. I gave it a four. It's My Cupcake by Helena Hunting, an adult romance. Gave it a five. The Roommate by Rosie Denon, I believe. I gave a three. Low That First Sight by Suzanne Park, another romance, which I gave a three. A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore, an historical romance, which I gave a four. The Switch by Beth O'Leary, a literary fiction, I would say more than a romance. Gave it a three. Confessions on the Set. 45, I believe by Lisa Unger, an adult thriller, gave it a three. Now That I Found You by Christina Forrest, this is a YA contemporary, which I gave a four. They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman, a young adult thriller, gave it a two, really. And lastly, A Deadly Inside Scoop by Abby Collette. This is a mystery, like a cozy mystery, but I kind of just put it in with all of the other mysteries, gave it a three out of five. September, 10 books, we're going down a little bit. I have to put post notes on these. Well Played by Jen DeLuca, an adult romance, gave it a three. Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade, another romance, gave this one a four. Simmer Down by Sarah Smith, another romance, another four star. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, a literary fiction, and I gave it a three. One by One by Ruth Ware, an adult thriller, gave it a two. Who's surprised? The Secret Life of Addie LaRue by V. E. Schwab, an adult fantasy, gave it a five. A Cuban's Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor, by Laura Taylor Namey, I gave a four. That was a young adult contemporary. Then I have Horrid by Katrina Leno, a young adult mystery thriller horror. I don't know. Gave it a four. Really enjoyed it. Majesty by Catherine McGee. Um, a YA contemporary, which I gave a four. And lastly, I have recommended for you by. I forgot the author's name again. Ugh. Um, this is another Y contemporary. I gave it a three. October, we have 11 books. First up, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones is a YA fantasy. Gave it a four out of five. Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell, a, an adult thriller. I gave it a three. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, a thriller. All these are going to be so much in October. Two. The Turn to the Key by Ruth Ware. Three. A thriller again. The One by John Mars, another thriller, five. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morana Garcia, uh, a horror, I gave a four. Hill Creek by Scott Thomas, another horror, another four. Super creepy. The Whisper Man by Alex North, and thriller, which I gave a four. Vampires Never Die, Never Get Old. It's a YA anthology. I gave it a three, sadly. The End of Her by Sherry LaPena, another thriller, another three. And lastly, The Haunting of Beatrix Green. This is by three authors. It's a thriller. I gave a four. November, I have 10 books yet again, I think. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lombards, a young adult mystery thriller, gave it a four out of five. Really enjoyed it. Maybe it was a three. I don't know. I had fun with it. Love Your Life by Sophie Kinsella, an adult romance. I gave a four. The Boy Toy by Nicola Marsh, I believe. I gave a three. It was an adult romance. 
Dance, A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, An Adult Fantasy, which I gave a four. Breathless by Jennifer Niven, A Young Adult Contemporary, which I gave it a three. Chasing Lucky by Jen Bennett, another young adult contemporary, gave it a four. And yet again, another young adult contemporary, Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer, gave it a two. And yet another young adult contemporary, Run of Boyfriend by Gloria Chow, gave it a four. And another one contemporary but graphic novel, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, gave it a four. Lastly, we end them off with, you guessed it, another YA contemporary, Love and Alice by Jenna Evans Welch, which I gave a four. A lot of my YA contemporary, a lot of my YA books were in this month. The last month of the year, December, I read 10 books yet again. The first one being This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins, an adult romance. I gave it a three. Booked for Christmas, a short story by Lily Menon. I gave a three. As well as Wrapped Up in You by Tali Hibbert, another short story romance. I gave a four. Then I have In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, an adult romance. I gave a four. 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayliss, an adult romance. I gave it a four as well. A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir, the last book in the Ember and the Ashes series. Five out of five, but of course. A lot of ebooks. Radiance by Grace Straven, which was an adult fantasy. I gave a four. Ten Rules for Faking It by... I want to say Sophie Jordan. I don't know. An adult contemporary. I gave an adult romance. I gave a three out of five. Jingle Wars by... I forget the author's name but it was an adult romance. I gave it a three. And the last book I read in 2020 was a holiday romance, Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert, which I gave a three out of five. Those are the 140 books I read. At least I freaking hope so. I'm, if I miss one, don't tell me because I tried to do the math as best as I could. This is really insane in this room right now. Let me just show you. What you see, you see this beautiful background, but what's behind the scenes of whenever somebody does a video like this is this. That's right, just straight pure chaos that I'm gonna have to fit up all back on here. Fun stuff. Now that you've seen all 140 books that I've read, I would love to know your thoughts on them. Have you read some of these? Have you not? Did you enjoy this video? Did you not? I hope you did because I put a lot of work just putting, showing all these books and like organizing them into months and then holding them up and then I'm gonna have to put them back on the shelves. It's a lot of work, but it's well worth it. I enjoy watching these videos for just, um, I'm learning about my past years and it's very interesting seeing this year of how many, you know, I, I look at this pile and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of books. And probably at least half of my reading this year was ebooks. So like, imagine having that physically on top of that. It's interesting just to have all the like, this is the physical books I read right in front of me. And that is just baffling to me how many there are. And there's so many on my ebook as well. It's a lot, but I would love to know if you like this video. Now I'm going to catch my breath and put all these books back on the shelves. It's gonna be hard, but I'll do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.